Before we get started, I have to give a few shout outs to some fantastic people who showed love for the show and supported me during this incredibly scary but exciting time of launching my podcast. Most of these folks are friends and family, but also a few mates from Instagram who show up on my feed and remind me what I'm trying to do here to make time and space for my creativity and personal growth and inspire yours. This is a shared journey. If we need permission to fill our cups and take time for ourselves, this podcast is that confirmation to give to ourselves, especially when we are grieving or struggling to get through the day. My love and thanks go to my beautiful daughter, Miranda, to Arthur, to my mother, to Shafali, Hillary, Wendy, Sierra, Renee, Cher, and Jeremy. Thank you for telling me that I could do these things, that I could write these words, speak these poems, and share these beats with anyone who needed a touch of brightness. May you all stay on the bright side of the beat. Today I'm talking about shitty days. We've all had them, but some of us, yes, I'm talking about myself, don't tolerate them well. We act out over them. We ruminate over them. And we buy into our bullshit thoughts that tell us these uncomfortable feelings will be with us forever. They won't. They will pass. Shitty feelings always pass, but not before we feel them. That's the rub. How do we get through our shitty feelings with as little pain as possible? Through community and beauty. I'll explain. Community, that feeling that you belong to other people and that they belong to you. Not in a possessive way, but in a way that feels comforting, a way that feels good. Like they get you and you get them. These people in our community, people in our inner circle are there for us to call on when we can't deal with uncomfortable feelings. But sometimes we hesitate to reach out to them. We think they won't have time for us. They won't really care. But the truth is we'll never know. If we don't give them a chance, give ourselves a chance to find help. As for beauty, it's all around us. What a beautiful planet we live on. Find beauty in nature. Find it in smells, sights, touch. Find beauty in love, in hard work toward meaningful goals and in small, unexpected places throughout the day. I hope this podcast is one place where you can find community and beauty. Where else can you find it? I'm Jill Hodge, writer and host of Let the Verse Flow, a bi-weekly personal growth podcast where I share my special mixtape of stories, poems, and music that's designed to help you turn your struggles into strength. It's a new brand of self-improvement. The opinions I express here are my own and not a substitute for professional help. If you need someone to talk to, please reach out to a mental health professional. Now, sit back and relax and listen to my reflections from the bright side of the beat. One of my favorite J. Cole songs is Love Yours. You can listen to it on my season one playlist. See the show notes for a link. Love Yours is about accepting the conditions of your life as they exist today. The conditions of your life may include many challenging feelings and states of mind and being. There's loneliness and fear and hunger and other uncomfortable states, and we can't make them go away at will. They are part of our life. And because that life is ours, it's better for us to own it and try to seek out the good in it. 
J. Cole is one of my favorite artists, and this song is like dripping with this soulful, southern, authentic vibe that reminds us to try to love and accept the place we are in right now. It's real, it's ours, and we need to appreciate where we are in this moment. As he reminds us, there's beauty in the struggle. Our will and strength to handle the human condition is beautiful. But life is often lived along a hard road. It challenges us, tests our strength, and surprises us with twists and turns. Can we accept where we are right now? Can we recognize the value of what we have? Family, a home, a job, a creative gift, even when they may seem modest in comparison to what others have. And can we stop comparing? It's hard to hear that you have to love what's yours when all you think about is getting more. I think this song is about acceptance and gratitude in the now. The truth is that money doesn't buy happiness. The facts back that up. After your basic needs are met, having more results in a negligible increase in happiness. But still we chase it. What if instead of chasing, we accepted where we are? We all have days when our minds are filled to the brim with curse words, and we feel like we are fighting a losing battle. And for some reason, someone has to come along and tell us that things will get better. We don't want to hear it. We aren't ready to know. We can't conceive that we will get out of the current state of how we are living in. And we have like few internal resources or positive reserves to call on to try to make our day better. But at that moment, we do have a choice. And no, it's not between a bad day and fooling ourselves into thinking the day will get better. It's about acceptance. Accepting the shitty day. Accepting that we don't feel good, that we are sad, that we're angry or depressed or that we're overwhelmed and trying to just sit with those feelings, feelings that will go away, but haven't really decided when. I'm telling you though, on a turn of a dime, the tables can turn and a glimmer of hope presents itself. Our situation changes. Life is change. So can we sit with our shitty day long enough to wait it out and wait for the change? That is the question. And here's my take on those shitty days when nothing seems to go your way. I call this poem, On Dragons You Can't Slay. Sopping wet but still alive, freshly fished out. A deep breath does revive, made it out, delirious, deprived, clutching the rim, I'm sliding. Slick black cauldron, I'm sliding. Fingers lose grip, I'm sliding. Collapse of my will, colliding. Clipped wings can't fly. Under the weight of beguiling fate Stop testing life, stop spinning, stop strife Grounded for life, invisible blood but it's there Sticky crimson, prickly affair A matted mess, twist and tear Caught up in my curly black hair Numbing stare straight ahead Blackened air quickly spreads Smoke is rising, I'm in the ring Blows keep coming, damn bells got a ring. Which round is it? Am I the king? TKO, but bees got a sting. Spectator sport for all to see. I'm sad for me, life's losing decree. No kings or queens save this day. It's all dragons you can't slay. No kings or queens save this day. Dragons you can't slay. Tomorrow offers another day I'll pass. I cannot last, or so they say. But they've said other things, and they were wrong. So wrong. Grief can't be pushed aside. Your last request denied. You've nothing left but to believe. 
The shifty naysayers, happy daysayers, they smile like they know. Belief with no negating. Tomorrow will be better, I swear. And it's always rose-scented air. It's all dragons you can't slay. Not on this particular day. Dragons you can't slay. They're everywhere and in the way. Settle deep into defeat. But just as you do, hope's walking down the street. It says hello and settles in. A cozy velvet seat. And you say, finally, you have arrived. Stay a while. Fuck it. I survived. In this poem, I talk about how we can lose control over the state of our life and the feelings of dread, sadness, and anxiety that we may have. You know, those negative feelings are the dragons. And in the moment, you may be helpless to slay them. You want desperately to get back to the equilibrium. You want to push through these like crappy feelings to get to a better place and quick. But life doesn't work that way. We can try to soothe ourselves with positive affirmations and they have their place. But some days you just have to face it. The day isn't going to go your way and you aren't going to feel good. I'm going to be real honest here and say that this sitting with uncomfortable feelings is really difficult for me. I mean, that's why I'm talking about this. Um, For a very long time, well, probably most of my life, I've been a compulsive overeater. And I've used food to help push down feelings since I was a very young girl. In my early 50s, I started working on slaying my dragons sitting with uncomfortable feelings instead of eating over them. Through therapy and diet and exercise, I lost more than 60 pounds, and for several years, I kept it off until my mother's illness. Initially, I lost weight when she got sick because even food couldn't help me in the dark place that I was in. I was also too busy, you know, managing her care to eat during the time when she lived with me. But over time, once we settled into kind of a new way of living, I began to pile on the pounds. I used food as a release at the end of the day. I'd eat like a healthy breakfast and lunch, but when I quote unquote relaxed at night, I'd eat and I gained back 30 pounds. My point is that I know what it's like to try to get out of slaying your dragons, what it's like to you know, deal with feelings and situations that make your life seem impossible, but really dealing with them in very, you know, kind of hurtful and ineffective ways. For a few years, I tried to slay those dragons through exercise and a whole foods diet, which made me feel incredibly well physically. Weight training helped reduce anxiety and anger. These like two evil twins that caused much of my overeating. And my overeating was and is an attempt to change my uncomfortable feelings. I turn the anger, anxiety, whatever emotion into calmness through the act of eating. But unfortunately, that does two things. It robs me of the opportunity to deal with my emotions in a healthy way and to deal with shitty feelings by sitting with them until they pass and they do pass. And it keeps me in this unhealthy loop of sleeping, working, feeling uncomfortable feelings, like eating, numbing myself with food, and then repeating. It can feel kind of empowering to finally be able to sit with your feelings and know that you, you know, you'll make it, (laughs) you know, you're not going to die. And I work every day to get more comfortable with uncomfortableness. Because let's face it, you know, life is full of uncomfortable moments and painful moments, embarrassing moments, scary moments. Now, I use food in destructive ways, but it works the same with drugs or sex or money or drinking. There are a million distractions and counterproductive ways to deal with feelings. And it's time to find some ways that don't hurt us in the long run. I could bullshit you and tell you that a positive affirmation, some daily exercise therapy, and maybe like the latest eight-week mindfulness course is going to get you out of your funk and turn your life around but I don't think it works that way. I mean, all of those individual strategies could be an important part of the puzzle of getting comfortable with uncomfortable feelings, but there isn't really a trick that gets you out of the hard work of sitting with these shitty feelings. 
I think there are tools and strategies that can help, but they won't get you out of having to accept some painful moments and learning how to deal with them. Recently, I've been trying to sit with my shitty feelings more because they do pass and brighter thoughts do pop up. Hope, it really does walk through the door, just not on my schedule, but it does come. So we need to power through the shitty feels to get to the glorious ones. Here are some things to think about as you sit with your own shitty feelings. The first thing is to find a community that understands you and speaks your language. I hope you found one here at Let the Verse Flow. You can always reach out to me via my website or Instagram page. But there are other communities too. I was reading an interesting collection of quotes from therapy sessions over on uh, the wondermind.com. Wondermind is described as a community where people can come together for support during their mental health journey. And the article on best therapy techniques mentioned two that are relevant to what we're talking about today. The quotes were, healing is messy and takes time and feel your grief so you can also feel your happiness. The first is what I'm talking about here in terms of not seeking a shortcut to dealing with your feelings. I thought I had found a way to deal with my feelings through, you know, a healthy diet and exercise. But when my world got turned upside down, I couldn't sustain those things when I was having such a hard time just even getting myself out of bed. It wasn't going to happen then. And I remember going to the gym once and crying in the bathroom. At that point, it's time to go home. I needed more time to heal before I could go out in public and really push, you know, through a workout. I also had to feel my grief before I could step back into my daily routines. And this idea also resonates in my poem. You have to you know, deal with the dragons and you may not be able to slay them. Instead, you pass through the feelings to get to hopefully a better place where you experience some hope and then happiness again. I've put a link to the uh, Wondermind website in the show notes. Check it out and see if there are perspectives there that fit your needs. The second thing is, if you have to sit with your feelings, why not sit in a beautiful place? A place that engages your senses. It could be a museum, a park, or a beach. It's hard to sit in any of those places and not feel connected to something greater than yourself. Call it Mother Nature or the creative spirit, whatever feels right to you. But sitting in these places has helped me do two things. Um, it takes me out of my head for a bit. So I can see the beauty that continues to go on in the world. And I know that I will be part of it in some future moment, just not now. And two, it lets me put some space between my feelings and my heart. When I take in beautiful things, my senses start to like tingle and new feelings rise up. And it's a healthy distraction that I can use if my negative feelings become too overwhelming to sit with. Sometimes immersing yourself in new positive sensations can override the negative emotions for a bit. For example, um, you may have heard me mention a bumblebee in one of the previous episodes. I saw this like chubby little bumblebee hovering over a flower one morning. Um, and I was sitting um, here in New York City on Columbia University's beautiful campus. And I was waiting to go see my mother at a local hospital. And I had I'd arrived too early for visiting hours. So I got some coffee and headed over to a bench on the campus. And I was really sad at that point. I really was going through a lot. And I was really literally looking down the whole time for most of the walk there. I don't even remember looking up. And I just like was on, I was on autopilot and I sat on a bench. And at some point I looked up and realized that it was an amazingly beautiful day. You know, the weather was perfect. It was sunny and there was like this nice breeze. And there were these colorful flowers across from the bench, very close to me. And I hadn't even noticed them. I had not noticed them. But suddenly I saw a chubby little bumblebee hovering inside a beautiful yellow flower. It was a moment that, I don't know, it somehow brought me a little clarity. And I could see that beauty was still in the world. And I would be able to see it again someday. And even though I was really struggling in that moment, it didn't stop the beauty from being there all around me. And that was a little comforting. 
you know, I had to have faith that I would experience better days at some point in the future. And I have. All right, my creative tribe, here are this week's journal prompts. Sit with your feelings, take in some beauty, and then write about it. Please let me know what you find out about yourself. I'll discuss it here on the podcast and we'll add your thoughts into the mix. Here are this week's journal prompts. The first one, how long can I sit with uncomfortable feelings before trying to distract myself? Can I accept however long that is right now and build from there? The next one, how long did it take for happiness to show up in my life after a tough time? And the last journal prompt, can I be open to the idea that happiness can come after grief or anger or sadness? Until next time, don't forget to stay on the bright side of the beat. To check out my free podcast, head to my website, lettheverseflow.com, or find me on all major podcast apps. I'll be sharing stories, my original poetry, and music playlists that inspire this show. We're in this together. So reach out to me on Instagram.com, let the verse flow, and let me know what you think and what topics you'd like me to cover. You'll also find extras, like how I create this show and what inspires my music selections and poetry. I hope you'll tune in to Let the Verse Flow to hear my reflections from the bright side of the beat.